in the shoulder is common in swimmers. Shoulder function is highly dependent on the coordinated function of many muscle groups. These include the muscles around the shoulder, those that control the scapula or shoulder blade, muscles in the upper and lower back, as well as abdominal and pelvic muscles. Since the shoulder is an inherently unstable joint, muscle forces are critical for maintaining stability, proper motion, and painless function. The repetitive overhead activity of the swimming stroke can result in fatigue of these muscles. This, in turn, can lead to distinct changes in the function of the shoulder, resulting in the pain that is commonly known as swimmer's shoulder. One of the major factors causing shoulder pain is overuse and subsequent fatigue of the rotator cuff muscles, scapular muscles, and muscles of the upper and lower back. Consequently, this fatigue can lead to shoulder instability and predispose a swimmer to shoulder pain. The risk of injury and pain is especially true for swimmers who swim with poor technique. It is well established that a comprehensive program to develop strength, endurance, balance, and flexibility of the muscles is the most important way to prevent swimmer's shoulder. The exercises described in this review were chosen to develop these characteristics based on a sound knowledge of the muscles that are most important for optimal shoulder function. These exercises were chosen and reviewed by a panel of physicians, therapists, biomechanists, trainers, and coaches. These exercises have been proven to be effective in improving shoulder function for swimmers. These exercises address the three important areas. The rotator cuff, the muscle that stabilizes the shoulder blade, and the muscles of the low back, abdomen, and pelvis that make up the core of the body. It is important to note that these exercises should only be performed by the uninjured athlete. Injured athletes may need to modify the exercises in duration and or range of motion depending on the level of pain or impairment the athlete is experiencing. In doing these exercises, keep in mind that the shoulder does not act by itself when you swim. You use your back, trunk, and even your legs to help stabilize the body and help in the pulling movement. You will use many of these same muscle groups as you perform these exercises. Also, these exercises should be performed after practice or several hours before you practice. Do not do these exercises right before your workout since you do not want to fatigue these muscles before you swim. The first group of exercises we want to describe is designed to strengthen the rotator cuff muscles in the shoulder. The rotator cuff is made up of four small muscles deep in your shoulder. When these muscles contract, they do three things. They rotate the arm away from the body. This movement is called external rotation. They also rotate the arm towards the body. This movement is called internal rotation. Thirdly, they lift the arm away from the body. The external rotation exercise. The external rotation exercise focuses on strengthening the muscles that externally rotate the shoulders. The muscles that perform this motion usually are relatively weak in swimmers. You will need a very light to medium resistance TheraBand to do this exercise. How do you determine what strength TheraBand is right for you? Pull on it, and if it feels like the resistance is too light, you probably have just the right level of resistance. You will be performing many repetitions, so a resistance that feels too easy to start with will probably be just right as you get tired. You're going to be strengthening both sides of your body in this exercise. Start by cutting the TheraBand and tying it into a loop. The loop should be big enough so that your hands are six to eight inches apart when your elbows are at your sides and your forearms are parallel to the floor. Stand up straight with good posture. Do not hunch your shoulders forward. Lift your sternum and your chest towards the ceiling to help set your shoulder blades in the proper position. Your elbows should be at your sides and should be bent 90 degrees so your forearms are parallel to the floor and your thumbs are pointing towards the ceiling. Focus on squeezing your shoulder blades together before you start this exercise. Feel the squeeze through the entire exercise. If you do not focus on squeezing the shoulder blades together, you'll be exercising the wrong muscles. Perform the exercise by trying to rotate your hands away from your body, like you're pulling taffy apart. You should take about two seconds complete each repetition. One second as the muscles contract 
and one second as you return to the starting position. Count to yourself one and two and one and two and to get the correct timing. You should perform three sets of this exercise. Each set should end after two minutes or when you are no longer able to maintain correct form. If the shoulders start to roll forward, if you use your upper body or your wrists to help the motion, or if you are unable to keep your shoulder blades squeezed together, it's time to end the set. It's okay if you're only able to complete a few repetitions at first, but you should strive for completing eventually three sets of two minutes. You should take 30 seconds rest between each set. If you can do three sets of two minutes, move up to a higher resistance TheraBand and start over. Volcan Scaption. Volcan Scaptions strengthen the part of your rotator cuff that lifts the arm. Start this exercise using no weight. As you progress and get stronger, you can use very light weights with this exercise but even the strongest athletes should use less than five pounds. You can make your own weights by filling several small water bottles with sand. Stand upright with your feet shoulder width apart and do not allow the shoulders to slump forward. Lift your chest towards the ceiling to help set the shoulder blades in the proper position. Focus on pinching your shoulder blades together and you should feel tension in these muscles for the entire exercise. Raise your arms so that they extend straight out to your sides. Move your hands forward about one to two feet so they are now slightly ahead of your shoulders. This will allow you to perform the movement in the same plane of the shoulder blades. Turn your thumbs up so they are facing the ceiling. Slowly lower your hands to your sides, then lift them up again so your hands end up level with the top of your head. Maintain a steady cadence. Take two seconds to lift your hands to head level and two seconds to lower them back to your sides. Count slowly. One and two and one and two and one and two and one and two. Continue this exercise for two minutes or until you are unable to lift your arms while maintaining the proper posture. Remember to keep your hands and arms ahead of your shoulders and to keep your shoulder blades pinched together. Perform three sets in this way, taking 30 seconds rest between each set. The ball on the wall exercise. The ball on the wall exercise is designed to strengthen the muscles that internally and externally rotate your shoulder. You will need a ball. A tennis ball will do fine, or even a light medicine ball to perform this exercise. You'll exercise one arm at a time. Stand up or kneel so that you're facing a wall. You should be positioned so that when you fully extend your arm, your palm should almost touch the wall. Keep your elbows straight and pin the ball or medicine ball between your palm and the wall. Pinch your shoulder blades together and feel that contraction through the entire exercise. Roll the ball in small circles in a counterclockwise motion for 15 seconds. Each circle should take about one second to complete. Without stopping, switch directions after 15 seconds and make small circles in a clockwise direction. Continue this exercise, switching between making clockwise and counterclockwise circles until you become fatigued or after two minutes, whichever comes first. You know you're fatigued if you cannot keep your shoulder blades squeezed together, if you hunch your shoulders forward, or if you cannot hold the ball against the wall. Sometimes the ball will naturally slip away from your hand. If that happens, just reposition the ball and continue with the exercise. Perform three sets in this fashion, but do not go longer for two minutes on each set. You want to repeat the same procedure for both arms. The second group of exercises is the primary shoulder blade stabilizing exercises. This group of exercises is designed to strengthen the muscles that control how your shoulder blades move. These muscles are found in the middle of your upper back and along your sides. When these muscles contract, they cause your shoulder blades to rotate or slide across your back. 
They work in coordination with the rotator cuff muscles to control the movement of the shoulder. If these muscles are weak, you put too much stress on the rotator cuff when you swim. Theraband rowing. Theraband rowing strengthens the muscles that hold your shoulder blades in place. These muscles are important in helping your shoulder joint to move when you swim. To perform this exercise, you will need a moderate resistance theraband. First, make a loop with the theraband and tie the ends together. The loop should be about two feet long. Attach this loop to a doorknob or some other stationary object that will not move when you pull on the theraband. Sit on a bench or at the edge of a chair. Position the chair so that when your arms are extended in front of you, the TheraBand is just taut. Focus on squeezing the shoulder blades together. Maintain this contraction for the entire exercise. Do not hunch the upper back or shoulders, but sit with an upright posture. Lift the chest to further help set the shoulder blades. Pull your hands towards your body. Keep your elbows in and pull your hands to a point between your belly button and your rib cage. Make sure you lead the pull with your elbows. Think about pinching your shoulder blades together with each row. Your palms should be facing upward when you pull towards your chest. Maintain a comfortable cadence, completing one repetition every two seconds. Count to yourself, one and two and one and two and one and two. Perform three sets, ending each set when you become fatigued or reach two minutes of exercise. Like the other exercises, fatigue is indicated when your posture slumps or you cannot keep your shoulder blades pinched together. Take 30 seconds rest between sets and strive for completing three sets of two minutes each. Push-ups with a plus. This push-up exercise strengthens your chest muscles like a normal push-up, but there's an added motion at the end that strengthens one of the muscles that stabilizes your shoulder blades. There is a progression to this exercise. This means that you'll first perform this exercise against the wall while you're standing. And as you get more advanced, you can do this exercise while you're on your knees, and then finally in a traditional push-up type position. To start this exercise, stand at arm's length away from a flat wall. When you stand up straight, your palms should touch the wall and your hands should be about shoulder width or slightly wider than shoulder width apart. Allow your chest to move towards the wall as you would in a normal push-up. Once you're in the down position, push away from the wall. However, it's important to do this slowly so your hands never lose contact with the wall. When you reach the normal ending position for a push-up, you want to keep going. This is where the extra action comes in. Continue pushing so that your shoulders rotate forward a bit. It should feel like the center of your back is further away from the wall than your shoulders, as if you're raising your back like an angry cat. This is the extra motion that strengthens the stabilizers of your shoulder blade. Hold this position for two seconds